I'll be talking about Stallings result, which is a topological proof of Grushko's theorem. This is a really beautiful piece of mathematics and it's uh, very influential in general in ideas for topological methods in group theory. So I'll begin by stating Grushko's theorem. This is going to be the first of three parts. In the first part, we'll state the result and set up the basic topology. The second part will have the main construction, but a key ingredient of this is going to be what are called binding ties. And the third part will finally show why binding ties always exist. This will complete the uh, proof of uh, Stallings. So what is Grushko's theorem? We have the following setup. We have F, which is a free group. Here, I should emphasize the non-Abelian free groups. And G1, G, which is G1 star G2, is a free product. Okay. And we have phi mapping F to G is a surjective homomorphism. So the theorem says that there are subgroups. There exist F1, F2 containing F subgroups such that F is F1 star F2. Recall this means that we can find the basis of F so that each basis element is either in F1 or F2 and phi of Fi is contained in GI. Okay. Note the hypothesis includes being subjective. Without it, this result won't be true. So this is essentially a result about existence of embedded objects, spheres, because embedded spheres give you splittings. But Stallings proof is based on uh, two complexes rather than spheres. Okay. So let's set this up in a topological way. So we have a following topological setup. Okay. So first of all, we'll write G as pi 1 of x, where x is obtained in the following way. I take a point and I have one space, and which is, let's say, x2, and another space, x2, and another space, which is x1. And x2 and x1 are joined at a single point, which is red in color, as you see. I've color coded this space. And what I want to do is map, model this by a map f from so z to x. And I'll draw z with a little bit of color to correspond to this. So what we would have is f mapping z to x with f star equal to phi. I'm being a little casual about base points, but it's not a serious issue. One can correct for these. Okay. So now what would x, z be? z is going to be just the wedge of circles. But I'll draw it in a slightly different way. Namely, we are going to decompose z as z1 union z2 such that f of zi is going to be contained in xi and in fact zi will be subgraphs of the graph z. Okay. So in terms of colors, the red point which is this common base point will let's say go to the base point and then x has for example perhaps three loops. One of them might look like this. Another perhaps is more or less a mirror of this. A third one perhaps is a little more complicated with one green end and a purple end and a purple and green. Okay. And we have this one, the red points which map their intersection. Okay, now since f of zi is contained in xi, note we'll use this a lot, f of z1 intersection z2 is actually contained in x1 intersection x2 which is a point 
Okay. So this is the topological setup. What we do is we model our group homomorphism by a map of fundamental groups. There's nothing unusual about this. This is what you do. And fundamental groups to what? We naturally take the free group as the wedge of circles. And for a free product, we write it as the union of spaces, but with a point identified. So that's what we have done schematically. So we have a color scheme for this. And we are going to think in terms of colors. And we have a color scheme for Z as well. Now to go ahead with the setup, we'll make the first simplification, which is the following. First simplification. I'll be brief here because it's an exercise to fill in the details. First simplification is we can assume Z1 intersection Z2 contains no loops. Okay. So reason, otherwise pass to the quotient. Z by Z1 intersection Z2 and let me call that Z bar and then we get a group F bar which is F by uh, pi 1 of Z1 intersection Z2. I'm using this a bit loosely because Z1 intersection Z2 may have uh, plenty of components so there are many groups here but quotient by that which makes sense which is still going to be a free group. Okay, Why is this a free group? F bar is pi 1 of Z bar and Z bar is a graph. Yeah, And so since this is a graph, the fundamental group of this is a free group. Okay, So we are in this situation. F bar is F over pi 1 of Z1 intersection Z2, which is a free group. Okay, And then uh, use the result for this case. Okay, now it's an exercise to see we can actually reduce to this case. And the main point here is, of course, that uh, pi 1 of z1 intersection z2 is contained in the kernel of E. Okay, so we can include it in, we can include it in, say, f1 or F2. It doesn't matter because it's images. Fine. So we have made this reduction. We just assume. So in fact, we assume if there are no loops, we can choose our map such that Z1 intersection Z2 is a collection of points. Okay. As it was in the picture that we just saw. Okay. Let's just recall the picture. Here is the picture. We have Z1 intersection Z2 is collection of points. Okay, we'll keep this picture with us right through. Now let's go ahead and go beyond this. So now that we have this, what we have is the following. Okay. So thus we have Each component of Z1 intersection Z2 is contractible. Okay, so now if we also had Z1 intersection Z2 was connected, of course, in our case it would mean just a single point, but when we change things, these components will not be points, but nevertheless, if Z1 intersection Z2 was connected, by Van Kampen's theorem, theorem, what we have is we have that f, which is pi 1 of z, is pi 1 of z1 star pi 1 of z2. It's indeed a free product. And this is f1, and this is f2. And of course, phi of fi is contained in gi. And this is true because f of zi is contained in xi. 
So we're really done. As soon as we know Z1 intersection Z2 is connected, we are done. There's a small base point issue here, but you can always conjugate this decomposition and take care of the base point issue. Okay. So we have almost what we need apparently, but connectedness is not such a trivial point. Okay. So let me just outline the strategy to end this part, and then we will see how to implement the strategy. Strategy. Okay, modify Z, Z1, Z2, F, etc. Well, how do we modify them? We modify them in the following way. We construct Z prime containing Z, Z i prime containing Z i and Z i prime will be contained in Z prime. Z prime deformation retracts, retracts to Z. And what do we want? We want F extends to F from Z prime to X such that F of Z i prime is contained in such that f of z i prime is contained in x i as before and we have so that well what do we want well we have got the sort of basic setup that is we have decomposed z prime into a collection of spaces so that they are mapping to the different x i okay we have not changed the fundamental group because z prime deformation retracts to z of the space overall Okay, but we had one nice property of Z1 intersection Z2 and we want to keep that. Z1 prime intersection Z2 prime has contractible components. Okay, in fact trivial fundamental group would be good enough but might as well have contractible. Okay, we will achieve that. And in addition to that, in parallel, we have number of components of Z1 prime intersection Z2 prime is strictly less than the number of components of Z1 intersection Z2. Okay. So this is the situation we have here. Uh, now in the second part we will see what is the main construction needed to actually modify Z to get Z prime and Zi primes and a map that extends and reduce the number of components. This will depend, as I said, on binding dice. And the third and final part, what we will see is uh, how to construct these binding dice.